In this video, we are going to discuss about the stack frame layout on x86-64. We will be following the AMD 64-bit ABI and we, our focus will be on Linux based systems and any system that follows the AMD 64-bit ABI. So as you can see, we have drawn a stack frame on the right side and uh, it has some labels. We have some registers mentioned here and we have a program on the right side of the frame. So our objective here will be to describe what happens when we run through this code, how the stack is created and destroyed for each function call and we will also be talking about perilog that is prologue and epilogue of a particular function. So in C when you are running a particular program there are a lot of code that is running in the background okay? and uh, that's something that you would not see only see it when you put it in debug and you disassemble the code. So what we are going to do here is compile this code and we are going to put it in disassembly and we will see how the stack frames are created and destroyed. Before going into that, as we discussed, uh, we will have a, we will really explain what a stack is. So uh, a stack is basically an activation record of a function. When you are calling a function, you either pass some parameters to the function or you don't. When parameters are passed to a function, in x86-64 ABI, the maximum number of parameters that can be passed through these registers are 6 against 4, which used to be for x86 32-bit architecture. Now, uh, some of you may not be very comfortable with the concept of registers and assembly language and hexadecimal but anyway relax because I will try to explain it I'll try to make it as lucid as possible for you so as far as you are concerned registers are locations which hold data in the processor so a register will not have an address as such these are the memory locations that are closest to the core of the processor and the stack is generally on the RAM, which is outside the processor. Okay, that's 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 all you need to know for now. The registers are what the processor works on immediately. So all the instructions that the processor executes are based on these registers and the memory. So what we have written here are the major registers that we will be needing for our program execution. There are a few other registers like uh, RAX which is the accumulator. So I'll just put RAX here though it should have been on the top anyway. So what does stack contain? So a stack as I said contains the parameters that are being passed. If if you have worked on assembly programming, you would know that uh, when you jump to a different location in the code, what you generally do is you save the address of the next instruction that you want to come back to, if you want to come back to it. So the the called the called function, the callee function, the function that is being called has the responsibility of that function is to actually restore the pointer or restore the instruction pointer so that the instruction can return to the caller function one instruction after from where it branched right as far as the C notation is concerned you will see that you don't have to take care of all that so what basically happens is it happens in assembly so when you compile a C code there will be this the compiler will convert the C code into machine language which will be having those machine instructions which you would either you would have otherwise written as assembly right so coming back to the stack so what does the stack contain so the stack first contains the, the parameters that are are going to be passed to the 
called function right so the caller function passes some parameters to the called function and this is where it sto gets stored now not always will the parameters be stored here because if the number of parameters that are being passed are less than six then the registers itself will hold it right the next important artifact that the called function stores is the return address of the next instruction that it has to come back to right so this is the return address this is the area so if you see the stack the stack is an area in the ramp uh, but it behaves the the characteristics of a stack is slightly different in most architectures so every memory location has an address uh, the registers do not have an address as such the registers can hold an address and data of course they 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 will work on data but uh, a stack is being referenced by two entities or two registers one is called the base pointer or this one this register and another one is called the stack pointer or the pointer to the top of the stack now top and bottom might be confused here because when i say top of the stack it actually means the lowest address where the stack ends so this will be the top of the stack even though it is the lowest address right and a stack grows downwards a stack grows in this direction okay after the this region that you see so every function since they have their own stack every stack again has its own base pointer so imagine when you are returning from a function and you are handing over the control back to the caller function the caller function needs to needs to go back to the instruction that it was it had to execute and it needs to get a handle back to the original pointer to the base of the stack right so if you see here every stack will have this structure every stack frame will store the base pointer or and and by the way the base pointer or this address will in turn store the base pointer address as a content of this memory of the calling function okay and uh, for for the sake of simplicity we will just have one base pointer here for demonstration purposes but there could be multiple base pointers if the function if this called function is being called from multiple entities multiple callers okay but here we are going to deal with only one below that we have the space for variables now variables are the local variables that the the current function will execute so all the local variables that you see most of them there are exceptions of course but most of the variables that a function uses are going to be stored in this this region of the stack okay and we are going to demonstrate it of course we will once we are going through this code we will see everything in action below the variables there is a there is an area of the stack which is which is used for various purposes one of the purposes that it is used for as i have seen is when these values are passed to the when the caller passes certain values to the called function you know those values are generally stored in these registers as i said rdi rsi rcx rdx r8 r9 right six registers what happens is once the fun once the callee function starts executing these values are brought over to the top of the stack here right so once these values are brought over here the function starts using these values so the first step is these these values which are passed through these parameters are brought over here and the function starts using these values there is a gap in this region and uh, this has some use as i had seen the the function uses this area as 
sometimes as a scratch pad for pointers and I'm not sure what else this area of the stack is used for below the stack there is a zone called red zone now this is especially for the AMD 64 ABI now the the last called function which we sometimes call as the leaf function do not create a stack for itself it has a stack which just stores the return address and the base pointer of the previous stack and for for the other local variables that it has to work on it works here on the red zone without incrementing the stack pointer to accommodate for the red zone basically what happens is your stack or the current function stack is the area you can say between the base pointer that is here here and here so this is the stack area this is the stack frame for the current function the red zone is an area beyond the stack now the reason why the red zone is there is the compiler saves some prolog and epilog setup and uh, tear down calls right so because if the red there is just the return address and the rpp saved it does not need to it saves two steps of expanding the stack increasing the stack pointer and bringing it back right so it saves on two calls and hence it works on the red zone uh, for uh, the ABI on for Windows uh, it is not advisable to use the red zone so because the red zone is there's every possibility that the red zone will be overwritten by you know uh, non synchronous activity so this is in short what the stack looks like and we will try to understand how the stack is created how the stack is destroyed what is a prologue what is an epilogue okay how parameters are being passed how variables are returned so on and so forth let us now go through the function that we are going to step through so this has a main it has a long data type local variable called answer and then it calls a function called branch with eight parameters okay 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 here is the branch function where you pass eight parameters now all these parameters are of type long right so we are not passing more complex parameters like float or so because uh, we want to keep our demonstration confined within uh, the standard registers and we don't want to move into the 128 bit registers for, for, for the for the purpose of this particular demonstration inside the branch function we have a pointer uh, the pointer is not doing much uh, I declared the pointer here to show where it gets stored in the stack uh, I'm declaring an array also but I'm not doing much with it this is just to show that where the array gets stored in the stack again uh, there is another variable x which follows uh, which uh, is equal to this expression and then i am assigning the address of x to the pointer and then there are two more variables called y and z which are doing some arithmetic operations and finally we are returning the value of z to the main function however if you see here that is z again is calling another function called as the leaf now the reason uh, I'm showing you the leaf function is here you will be able to see the red zone computation since this is the leaf function you would see that uh, the prologue and the epilogue are skipped somewhat and uh, uh, all the variables that you see here are which uh, goes into the red zone actually this area the computation happens mostly in this area and then this function again returns uh, a value to uh, the branch function and the branch function eventually returns the value to the main function right uh, pretty simple program uh, 
and uh, but uh, once we step through it it will be interesting so let us compile the code and uh, put it in debug and then we will go through the disassembly we will go through each instruction which will go through each assembly instruction i will emphasize on those instructions which deal with the creation of the stack and uh, and the destruction of the stack i will not go i will not go through the assembly instructions which do the actual calculation though we will step th through them you will understand you will see that you know how the computation is happening how the expressions are being calculated but we will not emphasize on that our main emphasis will be on the on the stack part of things let us compile the code uh, you will see that uh, we have put an option of no stack protector uh, stack protection is uh, the option is enabled by default in uh, ubuntu based systems uh, we don't need that option we don't need stack protection at least for the demo and that makes the assembly look simpler so we will disable stack protection for this session so the code is compiled now as we planned we are going to go through step through the code in assembly uh, so we will have we will put the code in disassembly view and we will step through each line of assembly uh, and we will see how the program behaves and how the stacks are created and destroyed for each function that is created for prolog and destroyed for the epilog let's put the function in debug so now as you shall see you will not be able to if if the function is not put in assembly you will not be able to view the prolog and the epilog right so that's the reason we will be uh, stepping through the function in disassembly and so let's start the code so as you can see now uh, it has stopped at the main the main is 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 the function that we saw in the program right and it is stopped at the point where it is actually calling the branch function with eight parameters right so since it has eight parameters we will observe that the first six parameters would be passed on to these registers rdi rsi rcx rdx and r8 and r9 right and uh, then when it will be calling the second function it will be the second function's responsibility to move these values from the register to the end or the top of the stack frame as i had discussed a while ago so let's put this into disassembly now So as you can see this is the disassembly view of the program uh, we currently are at this line in c uh, corresponding to this particular line of instruction this line uh, we will have quite a few lines of assembly okay so the first thing that you see is uh, it is pushing two values to the stack okay now this is hex but then uh, 50 stands for 80 and 46 stands for 70 so you will realize that these are the two values that are being pushed are the seventh and the eighth parameters of the function right and we had discussed previously that any number of parameters greater than six are going to be pushed to the stack right so let us step through each instruction and see what it does uh, as discussed i will not be going through the body of the function that much in the sense uh, i will not be 
covering the individual uh, expressions uh, that is that is going on in the function i mean if you if you single step through you'll be quite easily able to understand what is really going on provided you are comfortable with assembly so let us focus on the prologue and the epilogue part of the function that is the creation and the destruction of the stack uh, let us not shift our focus into uh, understanding how the expressions are behaving though i will go through step through all of the code and you will still get a you know you will get a feel of what is really going on let's go ahead so as you can see now it is moving the parameters the other the first six parameters it is moving into the registers that is the r8 r9 rcx rdx rsi and rdi though it is showing it as esi edi es ECX, EDX, and so on. It is actually these registers. That is the RDI, RSI, RCX, RDX, R8, and R9. So it is pushing the first six parameters into those registers. Okay, right. So and then it is calling the branch function. Now, after we have stepped through these instructions. we will see what the registers contain okay so i have i have anyway noted down the register contents here but nevertheless let us see so r9 has 60 so if 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 you can see here r9 has been populated with 60 r8 with 50 rcx with 40 rdx with 30 rsi with 20 and rdi with 10 so these are the first six parameters that are being passed by the main function to the branch function okay so <clears throat> so we will have a look at the stack now stack frame and see how the stack for the main looks like at this point this is where main function is going to branch to the uh, branch function and uh, a call has been made here so before before we jump to the branch function let us have a look at the stack frame of the main function okay of course uh, we will have to so we will proceed this way we will have to make a note of the base pointer of the main function that is this and we will make a note of the stack pointer of the main function uh, we will do this because that will help us to understand the creation and the deletion of the stacks okay so when when we when we view the stack frames okay and when we wind and unwind the stacks it will help us to keep track and to understand how the stack frame really works right so uh, henceforth since uh, the first first eight uh, nibbles rather are same redundant we will only be saving will only be storing these numbers for for our record to understand the stack because you, you don't you don't need these uh, right so let's go ahead and let's see how the stack looks like so here i will be uh, executing a command which is called prst now this comes from a python script that i have written this is not inherent to gdb so uh, this is uh, this i have written so that it is easier for you to see the stack frame as is so this this will display the stack frame as it is organized in memory in decreasing uh, order okay so it the stack frame is printed from a high address to a low address right so for that we will go back to the previous view because in the split view the colors will not be apparent so let us go back to the previous view and then we will print out the stack frame uh, before that let us clear the screen so that uh, there is no clutter so this is the stack frame for the main okay so what does does the main contain okay at this point so we can see that here here the main holds a return address to the caller function which is which is system so we did not uh, worry about this part okay 
this holds a frame pointer of the previous called uh, base pointer of the previous stack from which main is called. So we, let us not bother about that. Okay, we we may discuss about it later as to how the main is called, but not in this video. So the base is at DD70. I I will not mention this from now onwards. So the the base is at DD70, and this is what the base pointer register contains for now. Okay, if and when the main has to jump to a to the branch function, <coughs> it has to save two things. It has to save the return address as we discussed before, and it has to save the base pointer. The base pointer needs to be saved for the main function to get get a handle back to its stack, and of course the return address to for for um, the control to re return to from where it had left the main. Right, one instruction more rather, not the same instruction, but one instruction more. Answer is the variable in main. And that has been stored on the stack in address DD68. Okay. And this is the rest of the stack. So let us see what is there in the rest of the stack. Okay. So as as you can see, uh, it has 40 and 56. So you you remember the two push instructions that it did, right? The, four, uh, the that is the uh, that's the, that's 80 and 90 that it had pushed to the stack. These are the two values that are being seen here. Okay. Now, this value is something that I'm not aware of. I'm not sure of rather. So let us not worry about this this particular line. It is storing something, or maybe it is uh, this value is insignificant. Moving on. So this is what the stack for main looks like. Okay. So we will we will record. We will note down two values from here. The base pointer is DD70 and the stack pointer is DD50. If we just draw a little tiny stack here for the main. Okay. You will have the base pointer somewhere here and say that is pointing to and that base pointer is pointing to some previous stack value. So we will let us just write down the base pointer value for the main here itself. Okay. So it's D D70. Okay. And the stack pointer here is DD50. So SP is DD50. So <coughs> this in short is the stack for the main. Now if you try to Compare it with what we have, we had shown here. You'll see that the parameters, that is the past parameters, have been have been pushed to the stack. These are the two values, which you will again see in the branch function when the branch function is called. Uh, the return address will be uh, will be again seen in the in the next next branch function. But here in this case, the return address is this. Okay, the saved base pointer is here. That is a frame pointer or base pointer. You can call it either. Is here. That is what you see here. And then the variables. Okay. One thing to notice, even though the red zone is drawn here, there is no red zone. So uh, let me rub off the red zone at least for at least in this case. So there is no there is no red zone here for the main function okay so this is how the stack for the main function looks like the base pointer is dd70 and the stack pointer is dd50 okay now let us step through okay so when we are stepping we will go back to the split view so now we are in the split view uh, we, we will execute another instruction si okay this will execute the call instruction here okay once the call instruction is executed, it moves to the branch function. Okay, so we examine the stack for main. The base pointer for main is at address DD70 and the stack pointer is at DD50. So the base pointer has to be 
preserved along with the base pointer the the address location of the next instruction to be executed needs to be preserved here okay so let's let's step through now as you can see we have come into the branch function okay the branch function takes eight parameters from the main okay and uh, then it executes some instructions right some some calculations it does here now at this point if you see the branch is showing some junk values that is being passed to it except for the g and h value okay this is something with gdb we will not touch upon this a lot here let's step through so this is the prologue part so in main you did not see the prologue part right i mean the main was called from the system so uh, main would not be showing you a full prologue but here you can see how the stack is getting built okay so the first instruction as you might see is push rbp so the old rbp see was dd70 right that is the base pointer for the stack for the main now since this is this is a different function and it needs to use the base pointer for its own purpose this needs to be saved right so what is being done here is the rbp is saved onto the stack right so step through step through this so the rbp is onto the stack now okay now this is this the next line is pretty important okay here what it does is it moves the stack pointer to the base pointer so it moves whatever is the content of the stack pointer into the base pointer register okay so what does the stack pointer register contain 7f f f f f f d d 50 okay it is now this is moved to the base pointer why because the end of the main function the end of the main stack okay after the end of the main stack starts the stack for branch right so the the branch stack will start here right okay so the branch stack will start here so that is the reason why after so when the push rbp happens so let us see what is the stack pointer uh, value right now okay so it is it is uh, dd40 so since it since it goes down it reduces of course it is going to be dd40 right so it it will it will go down by um 16 bytes okay because it's a it's it's a 64 bit architecture the difference is going to be 16 bytes right so the stack pointer currently is at dd40 right so this is what is going to be put into the base pointer because here you see it is here it is here now it is at at this point so this is dd40 say right so and here you, the base pointer for the previous this this value dd70 has been pushed so this contains the base pointer for main and the address of this location is dd40 and this again happens to be the base for the branch function okay so quite a few things happening here right so this this is a part of the prolog right now when we when we take the next step what happens is stack pointer has gone into the base pointer okay so this follows the atnt assembly format okay so those of you who are not aware of this convention the convention is from left to right unlike the unlike what you may have learned that is from right to left so all everything goes from left to right so when it is percentage rsp to percentage rbp it is from value is getting stored from rsp to rbp now so this this has been done 
so what you see here 0x b0 to rsp so <coughs> this is a very this is this is the key if you understand this you understand the stack right so what is basically happening is now the compiler has made a calculation and it is incrementing the stack pointer okay to point to somewhere it is it is incrementing in the sense it is decreased that's because the stack because the stack grows down okay it is incrementing the stack by 176 bytes that is b0 is 176 bytes okay that is it is decreasing the address by 176 bytes so it's coming down here and it is populating the rsp with that particular value so let us execute that instruction first and then and then we will check what is the new rsp and rbp okay so so the new stack pointer it seems is 0x 7 fff fff dc 90 okay so this is a new stack pointer for the branch function and that is because uh, 176 bytes have already been subtracted from the stack pointer so let us write this down here okay so that uh, you know uh, we'll, uh, we we understand it so this is and 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 this phase of creating the stacks is also called stack winding destruction of the stack is called stack unwinding right so the stack pointer is dc90 so just just let's write it down here okay now see what is now let us see what is the base pointer so we know the base pointer right because it was the it was the previous uh, stack pointer but anyway let us let us print let us print the base pointer also so the base pointer as we as we see is dt40 and it is it is apparent here we we can see that it is dt40 but nevertheless let us write it down okay so this this is the these are the two new values so dd dd40 and dc90 now the question is where did the old uh, base pointer go of course the old base pointer went onto the stack and we will be showing that to you okay uh, that is the dd70 and uh, that 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 value is dd70 so here this area this area is the stack for main right from here starts the stack area for the branch function so you go like this stack pointer is somewhere here now down so, and, and and the stack pointer is dc90 okay fine so this is this is the second function this is the branch function okay so the stack pointer is dc90 here the base pointer here so what is the base pointer for this okay the base pointer for this is what is being held by the base pointer register okay so the base pointer register holds the base pointer address this is not stored anywhere but this address location of course stores the base pointer address of the main function i'm I, I'm, I'm repeating this over and over because this is a very important part of prologue so for you to better understand it right now <coughs> again uh, what happens what happens here is as we discussed before these values these values that you see here okay it is picking up so the parameters the parameters had been passed by the main into the registers the first six parameters if you remember right the seventh and the eighth are already on the stack and we saw that when we examined the stack from the main so what this part of the assembly code is doing is it is saving those register values from the you know what main had saved and it is putting it onto the stack for the 
branch function okay so and then it is going to use those values for its calculation so it is not going to going to directly use those values it is going to dump those values on the stack and then it is going to start using those values okay so that that is how it works here right so let us step through those values and and then we will examine the stack and we'll see how it looks okay so what is so so what did we see what what happened here first the base pointer for the previous function that is the main was saved then saved in the sense pushed to the stack then the stack pointer became the base pointer of the new function because you know this is where the stack ended for the previous function the stack point so the stack pointer became the base pointer then we subtracted 176 which varies from function to function this is not please don't think that 176 is going to be the uh, number that every time gets subtracted this number varies from function to function depending on on its uh, memory or space requirements okay so now uh, this as, as we saw so this is this is the new base pointer for the uh, for the branch function and dc90 happens to be the current stack pointer now the stack so so this is this is cleverly done since uh, a pop and a push instruction is quite expensive okay um, it is it is so what what is being done by the modern compilers is the stack is incremented beforehand okay so there is only one one increment here and then there'll be a decrement there later on when during the during the epilog phase okay so we have the stack pointer here as if you know the stack region is reserved now you could either push them one by one or you could just increment the stack pointer and bring it here so now this space from dd40 to dc90 is reserved for the branch function as long as as the function exists <coughs> now let us go through through the, these instructions and once we do uh, we will view the registers we'll view the stack itself and we'll see where these values have gone into okay so let's do a si so as you can see these these registers the rdi rsi rdx rcx r8 and r9 all these values okay so this instruction works works in the following way uh the minus 0 x8 this is the atnt convention anyway so the minus 0 x8 that you see uh, from rbp so rbp rbp is for this particular uh, function dd40 right so minus 0 x8 is 80 88 hex so it is going down 88 hex and it is so 88 hex would be again 100 and 136 uh, bytes down okay 136 bytes down from here and it is going to store the value of rdi and this one again will be uh, 90 hex 98 hex a0 a8 and b0 so let us i have already run the you know run through that part of the assembly so let us examine the stack now it's going to be interesting so let us examine the stack and um, let us uh, see how the stack looks like for the branch function okay so we'll examine this part of the stack so there is more there is more of the stack below okay so let us examine this part first and then we will move on to the next part okay so as you can see the h and g first these two variables if you remember were pushed by the main and we saw these two variables when we examined the stack for the main as well if you remember right in in dd58 and dd50 right so you can go back in the video and you can just tally these two addresses whether they were dd58 or dd50 indeed they will be so these two values have been pushed onto the stack now this one whatever you see so this is the this holds the return address of the caller function okay this one was when the call uh, call assembly uh, instruction was made from the main function this value was pushed onto the stack this value 40065e okay so this store this has the return address of the uh, to the main function this is important now if you remember at this stage in dd40 so dd40 happens to be the base pointer for the 
current function now this one so even though uh, i have displayed these three lines you can say that these three lines actually belong to the main okay but this is just for just to uh, just for, for you to see that these values are there you know the this actually holds see the value that it holds 7f f f f f f 0 dd 70 so is dd 70 not the base pointer of the main see this so dd 70 happens to be the base pointer of the main right so that value is being stored here onto the stack of the branch right so every stack that gets created in c will have the base pointer address of the caller function and uh, we had talked about it before it can store more than one addresses but in our case we are dealing with the simplest case and one thing you will observe uh, there is no gap between uh, these two right so dd40 and then it just goes down to dd38 so there is no gap so this is a continuous memory location there is one special case okay where there may be uh, you know entities in between these two so that these values start from lower addresses uh, that situation is where you may have non volatile registers to work on so there are some registers which are considered as non volatile and those register values need to be to be preserved across function calls so if the caller is calling a, a function that function needs to preserve those register values so if those registers are probably used by this function for some reason the older values will need to be stored here and restored later okay so so that is the that is the concept since those registers are not touched at all here by the branch function this this memory region has not been filled up by non volatile register saved non volatile register values coming to uh, the next part of the stack if if you remember we had declared a pointer variable i think it it makes sense to also show you the program now so that uh, you remember because it's been a while that you saw the saw the c code we are currently in the branch function as you can see and what you are seeing is the memory location of these variables in the stack in the stack frame so as you can see the pointer that is a pointer variable pointer is nothing but a variable which stores the address of some other uh, data type right so the pointer itself is in this address then you have the array so the array is of size 80 bytes okay uh, i had declared the size of the array as uh, 20 okay and since it's an array of type int not long okay so each element of the array would be 4 bytes so 20 into 4 happens to be 80 bytes and that's what you see here okay 80 bytes of data has been stored and the way i have gotten it printed you will see it's in decreasing order of address so uh, it it goes down right 58504840 so on and so forth. so so that it's easier for you to understand then the x y and z values are printed in the stack now they don't have anything significant as yet because uh, it's just uh, you know the the space has just been reserved now okay nothing else has been done yet the cal it is not yet into the calculation the space has just been reserved okay so let us let us uh, go a little further and see what the stack looks like now <coughs> you would have uh, we saw that something was pushed onto the stack right so from these registers there is rdi rsi rcx rdx r8 and r9 these values were pushed onto the stack right so if you see here these are the values you see 3c is uh, 60 then 50 40 30 20 10 so these values are actually the the values that were getting pushed with an offset of the base pointer are these values okay so now uh, this function 
does not need to directly refer the registers every time it can access its own stack and work on those values right so so this is one step that happens now this area uh, one one entry in this area is going to be used for the uh, as a as a scratch pad for calculating the pointer uh, value and uh, assigning it to the pointer that we have seen here if you see this function here pointer ampersand x so when when the address of x is getting assigned to the pointer before that um, this this stack area is actually being used for some calculation that is to you know uh, save the address of that x save the address of the value of x here and then assigning it back to the pointer value so this is used being used as a scratch pad area but that is only one entry i have no idea why uh, the remaining part of the stack is so big it is definitely using this for passing the values but the top part i'm not sure okay so let's get back to the split uh, view of gdb and proceed further <coughs> so where are we now we are at we are here right so this is this is the start of the calculation so as as we discussed we will not go too much deep into the calculation as it is as it is happening uh, this is basically as you can see move minus 8 8 rbp rax is all those values that i showed you were stored in the stack from the registers the parameters are being now pulled into rax because rax is the register where all the you know arithmetic and uh, calculations arithmetic calculations are going to be done so that's what's happening here so you know since it's it's a it's um, a, a multiplication that is happening okay here so that is why you have these imol instructions okay so we'll just we'll just go through these quickly the lea instruction basically is to you know uh, grab the address of uh, this instruction is actually that ampersand that ampersand x that you have so that address is being actually grabbed by uh, lea so anyway uh, we are not getting too deep into that right now let's proceed because we'll have to see the stack frame part so all of this are these are uh, the calculations that are happening and on top you will see you know the highlight is moving accordingly as to uh, uh, on which instruction to which instruction these assembly code belongs okay we will come up to the return uh, state okay stage okay so here there's a division instruction because you know there's a you know, modulo instruction here right so then some moves and this is okay so so up to here all the calculations happened right then again so what what happens now we have to move to the leaf function now okay so again the same logic in leaf function when the leaf function is going to be called okay the base pointer for the branch function has to be stored okay right the return address for the branch function has to be stored okay so all of that is going to be done by the all of that is the responsibility of the leaf function now right so here the sequence of instructions that it is going through is a part of the prolog now right so we have not touched the epilog epilog will be touched when we are uh, rolling the stack back okay so now it's a call queue instruction call queue instruction is the same as uh, we saw before it will push the return address of this function okay that is the branch function so the next instruction to execute so it is going to be this and then and uh, it is going to branch to that function that is the leaf now when it just branches to the function i am not talking about you single stepping through in c if you single step through in main in disassembly you will see that as we discussed before there will be a lot of instructions even before it hits the first instruction in in in, in c code right Because, and that's a part of the 
prologue okay so let's step so where are we now so we are into the leaf function the highlight will be in the bracket you will see that it, it is not coming to intervar right because there is a lot of stuff that it has to do so first thing it does is what is the current rbp now so the current rbp is dd40 right so it cannot stay dd40 here because this rbp needs to be used by the leaf function correct so what it does is it tries it pushes this value into the stack so that is what it is doing here so uh, when you uh, when you when you step through the rbp value has been pushed onto the stack okay we will view the stack afterwards again the same concept that we saw on the branch from main to here okay the reason why we are going through one more leaf function is and repeating the concept is because uh, we will see something we will see a behavior called as a red zone computation okay and that is the reason why we are at a leaf function had we made the branch function the last function it would have done red zone computation perhaps but you would not have seen the, how the stack looks like normally so since uh, i intend to show you both the red zone computation as well as normal i created another leaf function here okay you will see something uh, strange happening here actually in the branch function you would remember that after this after the move here okay so let's execute that after the move here there was an instruction where the stack was actually you know uh, pushed down in the sense the stack pointer was decremented right where is it here it is not there because what it is going to do now is to save that instruction of incrementing and decrementing the stack pointer right so if this is this is the convention for the amd64 abi it differs in windows okay so all linux like operating systems will follow this convention okay uh, for windows it's different now there is no incrementing of the stack so all of this computation that you are seeing is going on in here are happening just outside of the stack area now the red zone is 128 bytes deep and it just falls below the stack okay so that is the reason why you see that the stack pointer has not been incremented here it is it's as is okay so that's a trick uh, the compiler plays because of the because it follows the amd64 abi okay so let's go through the go through the instructions and uh, see what happens <coughs> so it is it is saving all these values in the red zone okay so when we print the stack we will we will we'll see all of it right so it, all, all that all the addition and uh, you know multiplication everything that it is doing is is here okay so let us quickly step through that i mean these are just computations that are happening in assembly again we won't focus too much on that okay so all the summations and additions multiplications everything happening here now and it it returns uh, and it returns something right so now what is happening is we come to this instruction okay <coughs> now from here starts the epilog part of a function this is from where the stack actually starts breaking down okay so we will view the stack here at this point what has happened what has happened to the leaf function we will view the stack and we'll see uh, exactly how the stack looks like so now as you can see the stack pointer is dc80 right c80 so you can say that you know the stack size is just one byte it is not incremented the stack at all because of the concept of red zone computation okay so and all the calculation if you see okay all the variables and, and, and everything has been stored outside the stack okay this is the red zone 
um, you know if I if I draw it here this is the red zone in in this case so for this function let us see what the base pointer is right so let us change the base pointer value here and then once we are once we go back you know roll back and then we will again start changing all the values here so the base pointer for this function happens to be dc80 and the stack pointer happens to be dc80 okay so it's really the same okay so the stack pointer is at the base pointer and that's because of the red zone computation concept there is no there's no increment of stack pointer no stack space has been reserved for this particular function everything is happening outside this area and this is all just to save that instruction of incrementing the stack right so it's both dc80 okay so all these values all the calculations have happened outside the stack area so this is where your stack ends and the red zone computation starts here okay so here uh, you just have you just have the return address and you just have the saved rbps nothing else exists in the stack okay so let's see how the stack looks like now so for this one the rbp is at dc80 and sp is also at dc80 please rewind and view this again and if you have any questions you can always ask your questions in the comment section i'll try my best to answer you yeah so now now let us move back to the split view and uh, keep stepping through the assembly now it comes to now the leaf function comes to the retq instruction we now reach the epilog phase of the leaf function so here what happens now the epilog phase if you see of the leaf function will be different slightly different from the epilog phase of the branch function okay because the leaf function incorporates red zone computing therefore the instructions will be slightly different so instead of leave you will see there is a pop instruction here so what does the pop instruction do the pop instruction is taking out the value that there is in the stack pointer and putting it in the into the rbp register in the leaf function since the rbp register saves the and the r and the stack pointer are the same and since the rpp register obviously saves the frame pointer of the previous function that is the branch function pop rpp will actually restore the base of the branch function right so when you do a pop rbp right now in the rbp register we have the base pointer of the branch function okay so if you print out the rbp register now you will see that the value is dd40 so we, what is dd40 dd40 happens to be the base pointer of the branch function which we will see now return return uh, obviously will uh, use the address stored address on the stack of the return uh, to return to the branch function so once retq is executed we will see that the control goes back to the branch function see here so the control is at the branch function one instruction after from where it had branched out okay now let us have a look at the stack of the branch function so uh, when we see the stack of the branch function we will know that uh, the the base pointer has been restored the base pointer has been popped out of the stack of the leaf and it has been restored so that is how the branch function is able to get an access to its stack okay so let's see we'll move to 
the standard view and see where the base is so as you can see the base pointer for the branch function is dd40 which has and this has been restored by the leaf function okay and you saw the return address there so the return address was uh, again restored because the return uh, instructed the control to go back to one instruction after where it had branched to the from where it had branched to the leaf function okay so this is the old stack that you see this is the old stack for the branch function that you see there will be some changes of course that is uh, some values will be populated here of course because uh, it gets back the value of the leaf function here right so this z value is going to be populated in the z variable and then again the branch function will come to the return phase so it will return this value to the main function now this epilog phase and as you can see the stack for the leaf function ceases to exist so it, it has it has no existence anymore because okay the values on the stack will be retained they are not uh, deleted as such but the stack pointer is pointing somewhere else so the the stack for the leaf function ceases to exist now we have the stack for the we are in the in, in the stack for the branch function and the branch function is now going to return now once the branch function returns to the main function as usual what is going to happen it is going to load the base pointer with the saved value of the base pointer that it has on the stack and then it is going to return to the main function from where it had left off right so let's step through and see what happens these are uh, the you know these are the computations that are happening so that's okay then we come to the leave queue instruction now the leave queue instruction is as you saw leave queue we are encountering the leave queue instruction for the first time here because and this is a part of the epilogue now the leave queue instruction does two things In, uh, instead of the leave queue instruction the compiler could have written move the value of the base pointer to the stack pointer and then pop the value of the base pointer okay so leave queue instruction does both the things together okay so what is the first part so leave queue leave queue is doing this okay so let me let me write it down for you so that you understand it so leave queue is doing a move from that's the first thing it is doing and the second thing it is doing is okay so let us examine what is happening here uh, we will execute the leave instruction anyway but let us see I, I can understand that the desktop is getting very cluttered here but uh, we will need to uh, we will need to understand the concepts right so okay uh, now the RBP for uh, this function uh, this function is of course uh, different so the RBP is uh, as we saw previously it's DD40 and the RSP is TC90 right so let us write it down so this is what we saw when we had left the function that time right this was this was so since it's since uh, this is the epilogue phase where the function is moving back you will see the same values resurface again right okay now coming to the leave queue instruction it executes these two so first thing it does is moving the value of EVP to ESP okay so the base pointer to the stack pointer now the base pointer here is the value DD40 right here this is the value right so when that value is moved to the stack pointer where does it point to so once that value is moved it actually points to the base pointer of the current function 
Now, what does the base pointer of the branch function, that is, what does the stack address where the base pointer is, contain? It contains the base pointer address of the main function, right? So, what we are doing is moving EBP to ESP is we are shortening the stack. So, this is this is what's what's happening from from here. We are shortening the stack and we are taking it here. So the stack pointer moves from DC90 to DD40, which is the base pointer. Okay. Now this base pointer has the base pointer, stores the base pointer of the main function that is DD70, correct? So this stores the base pointer of the main function DD70, right? So this well so it's it points here now. Now the next instruction pop ebp what it does is it takes this it takes this value that is a base pointer value okay and puts it in the this value on the stack and it puts it in the base pointer so now where does the base pointer point to it is pointing to the base pointer of the main function so these are the two instructions that are carried out in in the case of leave so we have so leave instruction so now when we do a pop base pointer here it was actually pointing at the return address for the main function right so now the stack pointer points to the return address the the, the where you have the return so if you have a doubt let us see the stack or we can actually see the old print that should also suffice because the stack hasn't changed much so let us let us view the return address so as you can see the return address of the branch function is 4006 4006 5e okay and the address the location on the stack is dd48 okay so the content is 40065e and the location of the stack is dd48 so what's happening here is now once at this point it is pointing to dd48 okay the stack uh, uh, pointer is pointing to dd48 now when we step through once again we come back to the main function now let us examine the main function stack okay so so what what happened if you see 40065e right see the see the address 40065e so if if i go back and examine the stack of branch okay you will see that the address location stored is 40065e okay so when that return happened this value was popped out right so now let us examine what the main stack looks like it is going to look pretty much similar to what it had looked before but nevertheless let's verify it okay so we see that of course the stack pointer is at dd50 because once you popped the uh, you know once you returned the value okay uh, the stack pointer is going to increase by one and uh, you know the base pointer is at dd70 again and everything of the main is as we saw when we left the main now let us step through the remainder of the main function the assembly instructions and populate the answer variable okay so let us get back to the split view and let's let's start stepping through so we have come back to the main function uh, it has the answer variable ready it just needs to populate it in the, the right place right so let us start stepping through so as you can see it has saved the so the answer was in the accumulator so whenever a uh, we we spoke of this before whenever there's a return value from any function it is generally stored in the accumulator 
in x86 architecture okay so here the move rx to 08 rbp means that it has stored it in a, an area in the stack which corresponds to the answer variable okay now it moves 0x0 0 0 to ax which is nothing but which corresponds to the return 0 so we will not go beyond this point we will just see the stack once again so now you see if you compare this one and this one you will see that the answer variable is populated with a value so this is the complete picture of what happens when a branch and a leaf function is called what is red zone computing what is a prologue what is an epilogue how parameters are passed for x8664 architecture so i hope you like the video uh, comments suggestions are most welcome please let me know what topic you would like me to work on in the next video uh, i would prefer to work on topics pertaining to linux kernel embedded systems so on and so forth so just let me know please put a thumbs up if you like the video thumbs down if you didn't like it and I hope to see you in my next video and thank you very much for watching.